it's devastating that people can't see work in person, but I think people, yeah. organizations have been really creative and I think very responsive. It's been nice to see what everyone's doing online, even uh -huh. though it, it's hard to compare. People are staying active and engaged. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. And we're doing a lot too, including this right yeah. now. So, so maybe uh, we should start by, uh, by you talking a little bit about um, when, when you first uh, got to know uh, Moira's, became aware of Moira's work and, and what made you decide to do this, these exhibitions? Sure. Okay, I'll, well. I'll flip through the uh, things a little bit. Okay. Um, it's a, I guess it's not that unusual of a journey and discovery of an artist, but it's a very personal one um, for me. And actually, a little, you know, I keep surprising myself that this has actually happened and we've culminated with these two exhibitions because of the way that my experience with her started. I was a curatorial assistant at MOCA in Los Angeles and they have a wonderful work in their collection. And it hadn't been on view since it became a part of the collection. Um, I believe it was in the early 2000s. And when I was there many years later, it was put on view for the first time. And it was one of those experiences where I was in the galleries during installation and I turned the corner and saw this painting being hung on the wall. <laughs> and it just really took my breath away. Um, it was a very visceral response. And what, what year was that, did you say? It must have been around 2008 or nine. Mm -hmm. And the work is The Wall of Fear. Mm. So it's a, you know, human scale size panel with pink and black vertical stripes and four grommets in each of the corners that puncture through the panel and you can see the wall behind. And, um, I just fell in love with the work and started asking the curators and the registrars and anyone I could about the artist. And nobody could really say anything other than <laughs> she was wonderful and she died too young. And not a lot has happened since then. I don't think I even was aware of the exhibition that happened in 2000 at that point. But so that sparked my one curiosity. in Toronto. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's really how I first saw her work and then just carried it with me. And the project leading towards the exhibitions really began when I then moved to be a curator at the High Museum in Atlanta. And I was able to find a work that is in the Phillips exhibition that I purchased for the museum. And I, applied for a Warhol Foundation Curatorial Fellowship while at the High and received that. <laughs> and those are kind of the two things that set off my research. Uh -huh. And then, um, you know, when I moved to DC, life has taken me different places. And I reached out to you because I knew you knew the artist. <laughs> and yeah really just with the intention of speaking with you about her and her work. And I think it was by the end of that conversation, we had decided that we wanted to do the show mm -hmm. at the Phillips. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's true. And I, you know, I, I knew the artist in the late 80s and uh, uh, mid to late 80s uh, into the 90s and until she died. And, uh, um, and uh, it's really nice to be able to to work with this material again. I, I put her in a couple of shows and I, I wrote about her at the time uh, and um, haven't really done anything since. So, so this has been really nice. And, uh, and at the time, you know, she was, she was someone I was, um, whose work I was very attracted to because uh, of, her, of its playfulness, you know, the, the colorfulness and the playfulness particularly. And she was part of, a, you know, a relatively small group of women artists uh, at the time uh, most of the art world was still uh, male and white mm -hmm. and uh, 
but there were these you know, a few these really interesting women artists coming out, and they they did all these you know really kind of uh, um, innovative work, crossing boundaries, you know, working in different medium mediums at once, uh, dealing with painting and and sculpture and photography. Someone like Jessica Stockholder, like mm -hmm. Jennifer Bolandi, and and of course Moira. And uh, to me, this was really, really interesting and and new. And so, uh, and she was uh, she was a lovely person. Uh, I wish I had you know known her longer and better, but but she was very kind and very lovely. And uh, and uh, um, I met her. I saw her work first at John Good Gallery at the mm -hmm. time when she uh, showed with him and. Uh, and that's really pretty much my involvement. And then, of course, she had a show with uh, Mary Boom. I don't remember whether that was after or before she died. She had a few before she died. She died I think yeah. two, maybe. Yeah, right. I think I, I did see that. Yeah. It's been a long time. So anyway, and uh, and you know, there, there's this incredible playfulness and quirkiness in the work that you can see in all these in all these images. Um, it's really, really wonderful. Uh, she had a great, a great way of incorporating uh, in the everyday world uh, and make these imaginary, imaginary wor worlds with her paintings. Yeah, and I think, you know, in a lot of my research and a lot of my conversations with people who knew her and were close with her, there was a lot of talk about her as a person, which at a certain point in my research, I think made me a little bit uncomfortable that I was really interested <laughs> in learning about her work and her practice and didn't want to necessarily hear about um, her relationships with her friends or um, her personality as much. But I came to really understand and appreciate how important that was actually and is in understanding her work and the way that she was able to balance the playfulness and the humor with the very serious interrogation of paint and questions of art history and that um you know in this gallery that you're showing here uh very reflective of the body and her body and so i think that's an important part of her story too yeah very much so, and and uh, you know, I was really struck when I uh, for the when I first visited her studio on Times Square. You know, it was like in the middle of Times Square, and this and this weird building that that was available to artists. And she was just really in the middle of things and made these really, you know, kind of dreamy, weird works there. So, and uh, yes, they're very personal, but there's also a lot of relationship to art history and. Mm -hmm. to herself and to to the body in general so it's it's very interesting there's that self-portrait right it's very very charming a very early work that has mm -hmm. been in the family's collection all of these years which is nice and i found throughout the years of research that so mm -hmm. many people collected her work directly from her from early gallery shows and really held on to it and lived oh. with it and still do live with it and have a very personal connection to yeah that, that's really true and and she you know she, she there was like it's like this cult following there were a lot of mm -hmm. people artists critics and and other people uh, that were around at that time that really you know um never stopped talking about her and 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 really cherished the work that they might might have owned. Mm -hmm. So here's the artist. Show. Here's yes. the rest in. So what's so remarkable about that show to me is that, you know, that there's a lot of really wacky and <laughs> quirky things in that show. <laughs> and, and it's really wonderful. Uh, you know, some of these things I, I really had never seen before. And, uh, and I thought that was really great. It is. I feel, again, you know, went back to, I think, her relationships with people and the relationships that I was able to cultivate through her, um, even after her death. Mm -hmm. And that here are the things that she gave to people 
Um, as you know, she was very generous and um, gave works to people. And I, you know, as she was knew that she was dying and she was trying to wrap up her studio, I think there was a big outpouring of gifts that were given. And so a lot of these things went directly from her studio into friends and family's homes. And like I was saying, have been lived with and cherished ever since. So I felt very honored that wow. people were uh, trusting enough to lend them to this exhibition and put them on view for the public to see many of them for the very first time. Yeah. I, I love that orange piece in the back there. Uh, what is sticking out there? I can't quite tell. They are little pressed metal uh, feathers or leaves. Mm. And the back of that uh, round panel is painted the bright green that we see in so many of her works. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the orange one, yeah, it, it almost seems a little American Indian or something. It has yes. that kind of, uh, at least New Mexico kind of feel. Yeah. To it. And here's, you know, I think you did a wonderful job in both exhibitions with utilizing uh, her archives. Um, and uh, so what did you kind of take out of it most? What, what the most that you took away from from immersing yourself in her archives. Did you learn a lot in that material, by looking at that material? I did, and so much of her archive was visual. There are some notes, um, there's some text that I saw appear as titles of artwork. So she was really working through, um, con Exactly. We took both of the mm -hmm. exhibition titles from her notebooks, but I think it was a catalog for her of um, ideas and emotions and imagery, including language, I would say. The language was used for imagery as well. Mm -hmm. And it really became hard actually getting to know her archive so well to look at any of her works and not see their direct antecedent, that everything seemed to come out of a reference. Mm. And I think, especially because she's always talked about or has been primarily talked about as an abstract painter, it is abstracted yeah. imagery that is right. found. <laughs> so these notebooks, like the one here, uh, where you, you know, derived uh, the title for your exhibition at Rest and Yours for the Asking, from so um, were those things she these scrapbooks were those things that she saved as potential titles for works you think i believe so because there were these mm -hmm. clippings from what seemed to be newspapers and journals and then there were also just running lists of found language um, phrases that she was attracted to different iterations of the phrases that would go on for pages and you see those appear directly in work titles. Yeah, we didn't have a better image. So I, I, I kind of zoomed into yeah. the one from our show where you can see back in business in, in another scrapbook mm -hmm. there, yeah. And I think that these pages actually, the Broken Dream page is the backside of the back in business page. Uh, They're the same notebook. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so this, this I was a little startled by that. You, can you talk a little bit about this suit? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was... was... A Joseph Boy's uh, piece or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I really struggled with the decision of whether I wanted to put the suit in or not. But again, it was one of these personal experiences that I had that was so important important to me in understanding Moira as a person, as, as an artist, that I felt like in a show such as the one in Reston, where I wanted to give this very intimate um, uh -huh. perspective, I just went for it. So this is a suit that she wore to one of her first big gallery openings. I'm not sure if it was Mary Boone or John Good, uh -huh. but she then 
gave this suit to her cousin and her cousin has had it all of these years hanging in her closet and when I went to go visit to see the artworks in the cousin's home she brought out this suit and showed it to me. <laughs> no, it, it really, um, I mean maybe my memory is just playing tricks but I, I, I really seem to remember that suit <laughs> on her. So, you know, it, it must have been at one of those openings that I, I must have been there. <laughs> and it has a presence, you know, when you're in front of it. it um, she was much taller than I pictured yeah. her being. And was tall. Um, yeah, you really get a sense of her as a person, I think, through this one choice of outfits and that it was such an important, you know, it was her big debut. She had her first big show. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is how she presented herself. <laughs> and the video is uh, from some theater pieces. No, that's um, an installation view of, the, oh, for show at Mary Boone Gallery, yeah. Yeah, so it's yeah. a slideshow of installation yeah. views, mm -hmm. which I just did installations she would have personally been involved with. Mm -hmm. So gallery that's shows nice. that happened in her lifetime. It's hard to, to, you know, to, to do exhibitions like this when the artist is no longer around. I did an exhibition uh, many years ago uh, with James Lee Byers and mm -hmm. he always wanted to do a show while he was still alive with me, but uh, at the time it was impossible for me to do that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and later I had an opportunity to, to do an exhibition and, uh, and, you have, you know, and he was always extremely involved in his installations and would always uh, uh, create these these new installations out of different pieces uh, um, and uh, and it was very difficult for me to I didn't want to just copy him you know so uh, so I decided to do something different mm -hmm. uh, but still kind of respectful so but it's 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 not easy to do that it's not and I actually wanted to ask you about your working mm -hmm with Moira in the interview that you did with her that's published, you talk a lot about her approach to installing exhibitions. Yeah. And you installed her work, I think in solo exhibitions and in group exhibitions. No, only in group exhibitions. Oh, okay. And, uh, and she wasn't really that involved, uh, honestly, in, in it. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I never really had a chance to do a, a big show with her. And, Mm -hmm. The first really major show was the one that, at the, and I was not involved in that, was the one at MoMA, and that was already after she died, and that right. project room show. And she had started working on that show with Rob Store, um, yeah. but I think just didn't make it to the opening. Yeah. There again, some of those quirky works, like the one on the right. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that strange device. <laughs> I can't quite figure out what it is. <laughs> it uh, is a seed thrower. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. the appropriate technical term, but okay. I guess it's a farm instrument for yeah, when you're be. planting the seed beds. Ah, oh, there's another detail here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really uh, remarkable. I mean, there's a number of these forks where she, she just kind of... Um, got these things from thrift stores and Canal Street and whatnot, and just uh, you know, created these interesting juxtapositions. Uh, those are two, I think, very interesting works, one, one in the restaurant and one at, at the Phillips. Mm -hmm. And of course, the piece on the, on the right, the, the NBC Nightly News piece is the one that I've, I have uh, shown previously at John Good Gallery and written about. And, it's it's a really fantastic piece, very uh, unusual the way she bent the wood and everything. Um, both of these works are really incredible. Um, yeah, what do you think? I really came to think that she would have started moving more into mm -hmm. three dimensions um, if she yeah. had had more time. Absolutely, definitely there, there were a number of indications that a, a freestanding uh, sculptural work still, mm -hmm. still you know paintedly, uh, but but much more object-like and and not necessarily against a wall. And this piece, you know, in, in obviously uh, um, the NBC Nightly News should 
should ideally she would have liked it to be installed not against a wall but for security reasons we, we did that it's quite fragile but uh, um, I think I think it would be nicer to probably be more freestanding right Don't yeah I think so and it does yeah. actually support itself I think so. Say, yeah. It's just, it's a little precarious. Yeah, but I think, um, it, I was just wondering, I can't remember if it was uh, attached to the wall or not, but I don't think it is. I don't think we did attach it yeah. to the wall. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, it's, uh, what else do we have for you? Yeah, here again, too, two very, uh, yeah, quirky works <laughs> again with these, you know, taking certain objects and attaching them. And uh, it's nice that you have so many of those two panel or two part mm -hmm. works. Uh, I, I, I love those because they are, they're such a commentary on, on wall labels and such things. They uh, really are. And I think mm -hmm. that, again, it was, to me, it also signals this interest in moving off of the wall and not quite ready mm -hmm. as a painter to make that full leap but mm. kind of testing the waters and I think really towards then once we get to NBC Nightly News and the mm -hmm. other I really consider there to be three sculptures in her um, oeuvre oh. and then that was it and they're all later in her life but she really she was playing with space even in this one on the left this untitled piece with the kind of card drawer pull yeah i think um it is hinting at more dimensionality because you could pull on it and pull out a drawer <laughs> <laughs> and she was just using her sense of humor and playfulness again yeah definitely yeah oh yeah and so i i just i put this in because well, for one, that's the drawing that Leslie and I yes. own uh, and uh, that she gave us, uh, which was really surprising because, you know, I, I wasn't really that that close to her. But uh, when we got married, um, you know, she decided to give us a wedding present. And so she gave us this drawing uh, and we've had it in our bedroom uh, ever since, except for now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. But then I was really excited when uh, when I saw this this blue painting that has a similar stripes, same kind of colors on the sides. And uh, I thought it was nice how, you know, these are again in, in the two different exhibitions, how they kind of connect um, yeah. the exhibitions together. So it's quite lovely. And I just love the, you know, it shows all that subtleness. Uh, but those are works that seem very much simpler. Uh, they don't have all the quirkiness and all the hardware, uh, but still they're, you know, they're really, I think very thoughtful and and there's and and there's a lot of a, a lot more to they're, they're not that flat as as you, one might think they are so yeah I think that's true and even as we were seeing the works come into the museum and as we were unpacking things mm -hmm. so many of them it had been a while since I'd seen them or I had never had the opportunity to see them in person because they were in storage or just out of reach. And the immediate impact of um, the work is you take the lid off mm -hmm. of the crate and the dimensionality, mm -hmm. even in the ones that seem to be a flat surface, she was really a master of yeah. the medium and the paint. She was able to achieve so much. The one, the blue painting um, with the stripe, you know, is on painted on a cotton fabric or something but she is still able with her paint to get such variation yeah on the surface and a wave pattern almost yeah <laughs> well yeah it you know it's always it's always uh, my favorite part is always when when works are unpacked and we, we get ready to install things but but this exhibition it was really fun to to see some of these works coming out of the crates and mm -hmm. and to to see the backgrounds and and and, and the backs and the sides and and the hardware um, mm -hmm. uh, for the first time that was really great it was it was a lot of fun and it was yeah um, you know as we were <laughs> getting in the way of the install crew trying to sneak to see the back mm -hmm. of each page 
<laughs> yeah. came out. Yeah. And, um, as you bring up this large yellow painting, uh -huh. she was very meticulous in all of her finished works as they left the studio to put specific hanging instructions to sign the work, um, to make notes on the back of the panel. So, so last they, time I saw that painting, it was hanging uh, vertically. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> At the gallery in New York. <laughs> so that was one of the benefits of having access to the archive, as I came across a drawing of it horizontal, which made a lot of sense. It makes and a lot more sense visually, too, yeah, I think. It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but this painting is not signed or dated on the back. Mm -hmm. There's no hanging instruction. So it leads me to believe that it was never finished. Um, I don't know what else she would have done with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you see it, it looks like it's a finished painting. Yeah. Um, but she was still working through something there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I think it's, uh, it's quite, quite nice. Gonna go backwards. Yeah, so there's more of those mm -hmm. two panel words, works and what well, what were the earliest works in the show? Uh in your show? I think you, you went back a little further in earlier, right? I did. There are a couple of very early works. One uh f right there on the kind of column in the back. Uh -huh. That little painting on panel is actually from her graduate exhibition at the School uh -huh. of Visual Arts. Uh -huh. So that was included there. I think it was done in about 1980. Um, and that is actually borrowed from the collection of some friends of hers. Uh -huh. And their primary collection is of Moira's um, husband. Victor mm -hmm. Alzamora, who actually passed away before she did. Yeah. But that work of Moira's is actually very reminiscent of his work. And their work was, their paintings were very, very similar mm -hmm. at that time. And as she graduated from school and started working um, in her own studio space, the work changed pretty dramatically. So it's interesting to see that really early work. And there's still parts of it that are recognizable later. And I even think in this one image, you can see a little bit of a progression of how the work changes over the years. So how was, uh, how was the reception overall at, at rest? And did you get a good number of people uh, to see the show before you had to close it? Yes, I think very well received. Um, people snuck in from out of town and didn't tell me, but I saw it in the guest book <laughs> later. People definitely made the effort to get out there, which was really nice. Um, sadly, I thought I would get to spend all this time with this show and yeah. I switched jobs actually, <laughs> right as the show opened. It opened my final week there. Yeah. Um, so I, w I wasn't there to get to see many of the visitors, but I've heard very positive, strong response and from people who didn't make it to either of the shows and hope there's still an opportunity. So I look and, forward to welcoming yeah. them because we're going to yeah. assume there will be an opportunity. I'm just glad, yeah, and I'm glad that the, you know I, I know that the, some of the family came and we were going to do this reception and we had to cancel it, uh, and uh, so. But I think they were still able to see the exhibitions, right? And yeah, they were, and they're yeah. very pleased and so excited and excited about the catalog. Um, I know yeah. also the catalog yeah. arrived at the museum, I think the day you yeah. all closed. <laughs> yeah, I know. I took a couple of copies back to New York and, and I was very pleased that Barry Schwabski, you know, came down and, and wrote this nice review and that was really great. Yeah, very thoughtful. And He's he been... A, he was also, you know, an old, old friend of mine and an old friend of Morris. Yeah. I read a lot of what he wrote about her previously and was pleased uh -huh. to see 
you still interested and wrote very thoughtfully about the exhibition, yeah. I thought. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, it's it's great. And I'm you know, I'm very grateful to all the lenders that they allowed us to keep the exhibition up until the end of the year. So which is absolutely. Nice. It's yeah. been really such a wonderful yeah. group of people, the family, the collectors, the museum, working with you and the team at the Phillips has just been so wonderful. I can't imagine a better <laughs> museum yeah, to show this work. Yeah. And I think that, you know, our staff really, really loved the show. And, uh, and it was a, an interesting show for our conservators to, to, to look at. I mean, you know, there's not that many contemporary artists that work with Cassine, for instance. Mm -hmm. So I think it was really interesting, educational for them to, to uh, examine these works and, and, and so on. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it, it, I'm very happy that we were able to do this. Me too. All right. Well, we're almost over with our 40 minutes. Just <laughs> limit. And so, thank goodness uh, for that Zoom limit that makes <laughs> and concise. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well. Well, thank you for inviting me to do this. I'm really glad we had a chance. Likewise, but, thank you for for doing this. And uh, you know, it was wonderful to to work with you. And uh, you too. I hope we'll, we'll, we'll be able to meet again soon in the galleries together. <laughs> we will. <laughs> yeah, both and, and go through it, through the both, both through both of the exhibitions. That would be great. <laughs>